Oh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> So my name is Beth and I am filming my first ever YouTube video. It is very scary but I thought I would just give a quick background to who I am and why I'm doing this. So basically I got diagnosed with lymphoma back in March. That's a type of blood cancer and I've been undergoing treatment for almost six months now. Yeah, it's been a really long slog considering for four months of it I couldn't see anybody. Um, I was basically housebound and shielding because of Covid. So from that I decided to start an insta blog just for my friends and family for them to actually know what was happening in my life without me actually having to go tell them. I could just put a post on this blog and everyone would know that I'm alright, what was happening with me etc. I started my insta blog and through that I actually connected with quite a few people around the UK and that actually gave me quite a good insight because it was so nice to know that I wasn't the only person going through this. Like have a little like kind of united team so from that i just kind of decided that i wanted to like start a youtube i want to be there for people who are kind of going through the same process as me and i feel like this is a good way to reach out to people who are in my position yeah i just want to be there for people like myself who at the start didn't have an absolute clue what was going to happen to me i just want to be there tell them what's exactly going to happen what's going to hurt and what's not going to hurt and just be honest about the full process. I think it's really important to document it now as I'm going through it. The shielding group are now allowed to come out of uh, shielding. It's really important to document that as well, like me integrating myself back into normal life and stuff because in years to come it's just going to be <laughs> the weirdest thing to look back on hopefully. But uh, yeah, let's get on with the video. I'm going to do a wee get ready with me chatty. I'm not going to make it too doom and gloom, don't worry guys. Like. I mean, I want to help people but I also don't want to put people into depression. I'm quite a positive person. I, I like to look on the brighter side of things. I just want to like inject a bit of happiness into somebody's life and just be somebody that somebody else like myself could relate to. So yeah. I think today I'm going to maybe try and go wallpaper shopping with my boyfriend. I'm thinking at the end of all this I kind of want a new room. I want a new space. I want somewhere that's fresh and nice and open and bright oh, oh. my room my room the now is quite dark i'm thinking that i want a bit of a brighter thing and i, I really need a new bed i'm just doing my base now guys um, in case anyone is wondering what i'm doing i actually got some people on my insta page the blog that i've started um to ask me some questions so we will delve right into them. I just think, like, the process that I'm going through with um, active chemotherapy it is a journey, do you know what I mean? And you're going to end you're gonna end up at the end at one point. But I want to use this as a positive in my life. And not just my life, but somebody else's life. Like, I don't want to sit around and mope about, about this. Obviously not saying every single day I'm so, so happy because that's just not the case. But... I think I just need to do something positive with this full process. Probably blind blue. Oh god, this is really brightening, isn't it? I started bronzing with my hula. Um, I usually start with bronzing with this. I've done my base. I'm just doing my eyeliner. I've never worn brown eyeliner before. It's a bit less harsh and black. I might need to fix that a little bit. So I've done it my liner. I'm just shoving on some mascara. What a fucking idiot doing this. I'm going to shove lashes on because I just feel like I can't get away with just wearing mascara than now. If I'm wearing makeup that is like... Oh, 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 look at this. I'm going to zoom in. So basically it's virtually impossible to get that thing off my eye. I hope it's really not noticeable. Right, I'm quickly going to pop on some jewellery and then we'll do some quick fire questions. That's me completely ready now. I actually had quite a few responses um, and I asked that on my lymphoma page. Um, so I'll link that or I'll put in the little username and if you guys want to follow it then you're more than welcome to. Okay, so the first one is what did you first think when you got told you had cancer? Um, I was pretty upset and I was pretty devastated to be honest obviously that's going to be my answer but 
I also was relieved because I had spent so many months being so so down and not nobody knew what was wrong with me like I honestly thought it was all in my own head they said that I was like do you know what at least I have a treatment plan now at least I'm gonna get better in some way and I always knew no matter how bad it was like I knew this is it at the end of the day like this is what's happened like there's no other way to deal with it so my answer to that would be devastated heartbroken I was scared. I was really scared. I was really, really anxious as well. I get really anxious when you don't know what's going to happen. Like, I'm fine. See if I know something's not going to be sore. No problem. But I had no idea what was going to, this cancer journey was going to entail. So, probably scared is my main one. Scared and also positively thinking that I was going to get better. Does getting diagnosed with cancer give you a different perspective on things? Um, yeah, definitely. I feel like I take more time to do things i don't rush like through things like for example if i was seeing my friends there's no time limit on it do you know what i mean you don't know when your last day is going to be and you don't know how long you've got left with your loved ones for example like i had sunday dinner with my family and then literally on the tuesday i was diagnosed with cancer and the full country went into lockdown after that so i literally couldn't see them so you literally don't know you don't know when the last time you're going to see someone there so i would just say yeah it would it has changed my perspective on things next one is what made you do an insta insta blog i think just because so many people had messaged me um and this is when the full diagnosis was private so many people messaged me and wanted updates and stuff like that and i just thought the best way to keep everyone updated um would be to start a kind of blog type Instagram thing where they could see pictures of me and see how I'm getting on and they could also be updated with my progress. That was like the main thing and another thing I wanted was I didn't want to forget anything. Your mind is like frazzled and um, I didn't want to forget one thing so I wanted everything to be in somewhere that I can go and I can look at it no matter what kind of thing. From that I've actually spoke to so many different people around the country with lymphoma and actually a lot of other cancers as well and I just want to kind of home in on being somebody for at least one person just to relate to or to get tips off of or to help just anything like that. That's that's what I want. Best advice for people going through it. That's a good one. There's no other way to get through it than to just do it. Like there's nothing else you can do. Like you can't do anything else. You literally need to get through this. You need to think so so positively and think all this is happening to you for a reason and that's the only thing that can get somebody through it and that's what what's getting me through is thinking this happened to me for some reason like I obviously was meant to be here and do this. I believe in everything happens for a reason so so much and I believe in fate. That's what I'd say is you really you need to think positively. You can't let yourself um, get in a rut. Albeit I have your down days but always 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 look at the positive side of things otherwise you're going to spiral down and I wouldn't want that for anybody. Has the Covid impact made things harder? 100%. If this all happened without Covid life would be so much better but um, obviously Covid is a thing. I've not hugged my family since before I went into hospital and that was on the 17th of March so I've not hugged them in nearly six months. Just hugged my boyfriend last month um, because we're at a lived contact so that was like four months without him. I've not hugged my friends, my best friends, I've not hugged them literally, ugh, I don't even know when. Because I hadn't been going out before my diagnosis, I was so so ill, I couldn't breathe walking up the stairs so I literally couldn't go out with them. Um, I've literally not, I've seen them obviously now because all the restrictions are lifted but I've not hugged them, I've not hugged my family. I've also got my mum and I've got my boyfriend who I can hug definitely made it so much harder. Although I would one thing I would say is when I first got diagnosed, see if everyone was out in the hospital and allowed to hug me and stuff like that, I would be so 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 much more emotional. It would have been a very hard thing I think to pick myself up and get through. Um whereas it was just me and my mum allowed in the hospital. I feel like obviously people would have wanted to come see me and hug me and stuff like that and I think every day it would have been somebody else and I'd have been like oh my god like look at the impact this is having on other people. I think that probably was the hardest thing for me is seeing how it impacted other people and like seeing my family and my friends upset like that is probably the hardest thing about it Um, I just it's something that you can't even help them because I can't I can't, t can't tell them those that they want to hear if I don't have it kind of thing do you know what I mean? Next one is, how excited are you for a big juicy night with the chickens? Absolutely so buzzing. I cannot wait to be standing on tables with my girls again. A little porcelain martini in my hand. 
dancing away, having the time I realise I actually cannot wait, I can't even tell you, I've missed the girls so much and I actually can't wait until we go on holiday next year. Big up Ibiza 21, it's going to be insane. Next one is, how have you stayed so positive through your treatment, you have been amazing. Thank you. Literally, just getting through every day is the main thing, like I wake up and I just do what I'm doing on that day, I don't think about anything else. It is so simple, I just think about what I'm doing on that day and how I'm going to get through it. I've not actually made plans for further on in the future so my main thing is how to stay positive is just focus on every day, live in the present. It sounds so cliche but it's so so true, like you need to live for that day. So the next one is crazy night out story. Right so I don't know how crazy ones like, I feel like loads of crazy things must have happened at the places I've been because who knows what's been happening but no me my friends are, are just funny like I'd say we're just hilarious one of my friends was sick in my hands once in a taxi nice Santa was also crazy with the girls our first girls holiday was mad like mad if I could go and redo anything in my whole life it would 100% be Santa I loved that holiday it was actually the best thing ever like oh I love Santa so much Santa was amazing what are my favourite memories? Literally anything that I'm laughing in, like any time that I've been actual pee myself laughing, I remember that for quite a while. I love just laughing and I feel like if you can make me laugh, like, I'm always going to remember you, like always. So I would just say anything that, where I'm laughing. And that's a hard one. There's there's so many things that I remember. I don't know, that's a hard one. Would you rather only eat garlic bread for the rest of your life or never eat garlic bread again? Never eat garlic bread again. I mean, I like it, but I would never want to eat it every single day. I feel like it gives you bad, like, taste in your mouth and, like, stuff. I feel like it's really hard to brush the taste away sometimes, so, yeah. <gasps> oh my god, this is such a good one. Favourite breakfast item? This is so hard. It's either got to be bacon or hash browns. No debate. Probably, probably hash browns because, for one, they're not animals and... I, I love animals but I really I can't give up my meat like I've tried so many times and I just physically don't think I can do it but I feel like the hash browns are like more environmentally friendly so hash browns is my answer would you rather a sausage roll which is all sausage or all roll <laughs> is this even a question all sausage obviously I love a good sausage like who doesn't love love a good banger okay next one steak bake or sausage roll oh my god I love steak bakes and sausage rolls, but it's got to be the classic sausage roll, doesn't it? Like, I love a wee sausage roll. <sighs> God, I'm not had one in so, so long. That's what I'm going to get when I'm finished my treatment. Has lymphoma changed the way you eat? Guys, honestly, I can't even tell you how much it's changed the way I eat. Like, firstly, I'm not allowed to like, dodge takeaways and stuff like that, because obviously your chance of sickness is increased and, like, really sensitive to bacteria so like you can't have certain foods like bunny eggs, raw steak. The diet is really specific for people who are undergoing treatment. It's just because your immune system is so suppressed like it can't fight off bacteria and stuff like it normally would. Um, so like it has definitely been changing that way. For example I've not had a McDonald's literally in six months now. Six months since I had a McDonald's. I'm not joking. I cannot wait to get a plain double cheeseburger. In terms of like just undergoing chemo and what it does to your, like, <laughs> I can't, I can't. Certain tastes and textures of food are just so disgusting now, like, it makes me want to vomit thinking about pet lunch foods. Like, I cannot tell you, I cannot fathom putting a sandwich in my mouth and how I actually used to eat that and enjoy it. How mad is that? Like, your textures and the taste certainly, certainly change and you crave, like, crazy foods, like, weird foods like a pot and a donut. Like, no nutritional value whatsoever but that's what I mean. So I've actually put on I've actually put on weight. So before I was diagnosed I was eight stone six so I was I was still a healthy weight but I was I was very very small. I'm now nine stone three. So that's good. When I was going to the gym and stuff I was actually between nine stone six and nine stone eleven. So that was like my healthy weight but obviously quite a lot of that would have been muscle. What are you most looking forward to about the next year? One million percent a fresh start. I know that's so cliche, everyone wants a fresh start in the new year but it genuinely will be a fresh start. A lot of what's happened this year has actually built me into the person that I am. Um, I feel like I'm a lot a lot stronger, a lot more resilient. I feel like I was quite an emotional person and I feel like now I've got quite a hard face. What I'm looking forward to the next year? Just genuinely enjoy myself. Like, 
I actually just graduated from uni that year there and uh, I'm just genuinely buzzing about putting some money away and just going on holidays. What I'm most looking forward to is genuinely being able to spend it with the people that are closest to me because getting a diagnosis like the one I did makes you realise like nothing else matters. It does not matter how much money you have in the bank. See as long as you can, you can go out there and be with the people you love and do things with the people you love. That's all you need money for, like genuinely. Okay, last question. Um, what is the follow-up process after treatment? That's a good one. A lot of people are wondering this. So basically, I've done already 10 rounds of chemo. I've done five cycles and I've still got a full cycle left. I've got two rounds of chemo left. So after that, I've got a four to six week waiting period and then I need to get my end of treatment scan. I had a eight week PET scan and basically came back clear. So there was no visible signs of cancer left in my body because that's clear they do a CT scan to make sure that there's nothing else after the chemo has stopped. I will have a meeting with my consultant and my specialist nurse every three months. So we'll be part of Teenage Cancer Trust until I'm 25 and I will have my specialist nurse until my 26th birthday. It is a part of your life for a very long time and that's probably the hardest thing to come to terms with that this is your life for quite a while. So guys thank you so much for watching if you've made it to the end of the video. I would really love it if you could like this video, subscribe and comment. That would mean the absolute world to me. And if you know anybody or you yourself are in the same position as I have been, please don't hesitate to get in contact with me because it would it would honestly make my day. And please remember guys, always stay positive no matter what. I've always got a shoulder to cry on here. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>